Do you want to have the most difficult backhand dink to play against? Well, if you do, stay tuned for this video because I recently played with, played against, and drilled with Colin Schick, and he was kind enough to share his secret behind his two-handed backhand dink. We recently had the PPA Red Rock tournament in my town and all the pros that I asked who has the most difficult backhand dink to go against, the vast majority of them said Colin Schick. So if you guys are ready to have a sick backhand dink, let's hop into it. So as you guys can see, I'm gonna be utilizing a wall today to teach you this motion. We're actually gonna be starting with the footwork of it all, which don't skip through this. This is the most important part about the motion. We need to have the correct footwork. With Colin, something that I noticed in reviewing the tape is the fact that he keeps his body open towards the net pretty much 100% of the time. Unless he's really outstretched, he'll actually cross his legs and then get a backhand here and then he'll spin around, usually do that spin move. Other than that, he just keeps his body open towards the net, which makes a lot of sense. If you're open towards the net, towards your opponents, you're gonna be quicker countering the ball, gonna be quicker resetting the ball, gonna be quicker getting back up to the line. Whereas if you cross, you're gonna have to uncross to get back. So he does not add that motion. He is constantly in a shuffle. And essentially what that is, is he's bringing his non-dominant leg outwards and then dominant leg inwards, outwards, inwards and he's not really crossing these legs, you might get a little bit of karaoke step where he goes behind here to cover more court, which is ultimately gonna help you cover more court. But for the most part, he is just shuffling to get towards wherever the sideline is. And then he's staying open towards his opponents as he hits this backhand dink. So keep that in mind as we go over this motion that we wanna stay facing towards our opponents. If the ball takes us out wide, we're gonna take a huge step with our non-dominant side and keep our body open towards our opponents so that they don't know as well where we're going. Because if we close, there's a big chance that our only option is to go up the line. It's really hard to curve that ball back into the court. The sponsor of this video is Hesicore. I have been using the Hesicore grip for the last two years now and I absolutely love it because it helps my hand to not slip off of the paddle and it helps me to maintain the correct grip position. If you'd like to pick one of these up, you can get 10% off by clicking the link at the top right of your screen or the link inside the description under Hesicore. Now back to the video. Okay, now that we have the correct footwork, it's gonna come down to the actual motion that we're hitting as we're coming through our shot. Okay, and what that motion essentially is, is just a non-dominant forehand where I'm going from tip of my paddle downwards to tip of my paddle upwards, downwards, upwards, downwards, upwards. It's that, and then I just add on my dominant arm and hand for added stability. So let me show you guys that grip really quick. And we wanna have two fingers on the actual handle and one finger on the throat, and then our index finger on the opposite side. This is our trigger finger. This is gonna help us to have added stability. If we take that off and move our grip down, first of all, we won't have enough room for our dominant hand to be on the paddle. And second of all, we're gonna lose out on a ton of stability as we hit through the shot. We need as much stability as possible. This really helps with stability. So try that just so that you can see what it feels like not having it up and then having it up. You'll see that you have a lot more control and stability with it up. So put the trigger finger on there. Okay, you can have three fingers on the handle too if that's more comfortable for you, but I like to have one kind of up here and then the other two on so that I have as much room for this dominant hand. Okay, then the actual motion, I'm going from tip of my paddle pointing downwards to pointing upwards. And it's literally this small of a motion as I hit through the shot. It's that small. If you go any bigger, you're gonna pop the ball up. It's gonna go too far. It's not gonna land in the kitchen, which is essentially what you want. Okay, and then I'm just plowing through the ball. Let me grab a ball here to show you guys. I could do it just with my non-dominant side. Tip down to tip up. That's gonna help me to get this feel because I'm essentially just creating a windshield wiper motion with my non-dominant hand. So tip down to tip up every single shot that I make. You think about just a miniature windshield wiper for like a miniature car taking all the water off of it. It's gonna go from tip up, tip down to tip up. That's gonna take that water off. Then I add on my dominant arm for added stability and a little bit more plow through the ball. And now we have a two-handed backhand. Now the most important part about this 
so we keep that motion really small, but that we accelerate through the shot. So there's deceleration where we slow down as we hit, and it's more so a push, okay? Anybody can do that. It's not gonna cause any havoc on your opponents. It's not gonna be difficult for them to return. We wanna have acceleration, accelerate, accelerate. I'm going slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, as I hit through the shot. That acceleration is gonna create more topspin and bring your ball down on your opponents quicker, which is gonna make it more difficult for them. Okay, now the most essential thing with this motion, as you guys may have noticed, everything is out in front of my non-dominant knee. Okay, so wherever that ball goes, I'm staying open, but everything's out in front. If the ball gets behind me, I can't really create that top spin while bending my wrist. It's then more so gonna turn into a push back where I come over the ball, and I'm not putting that tip down to tip up and accelerating through the ball. I'm just getting back essentially into the point and creating as much topspin as I can. With this, I'm keeping it in front of that non-dominant knee as I hit through the shot. Okay, so wherever that ball is, if you can keep it in front of your non-dominant knee, you're gonna be good. Remember, if the ball gets behind you, just change to one hand and try to just keep it in play. So if it comes way over here or something, not gonna make much sense to try to do this offensive shot. Because that's essentially what it is. It's a more so offensive shot that's going to set us up for a winner. Okay, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And a huge shout out to Colin Schick for teaching me this. It's been an absolute game changer. I'm really excited for each of you guys to implement it. I'll see you on the next one.